In this four-part series, we're talking with Rhonda Livingston from Asequa about the NQF and how it drives continual quality improvement. Welcome, Rhonda. So, why is educational leadership important in education and care services? There's been a lot of significant research that links effective leadership and positive outcomes for children and their families. For example, the landmark Effective Provision of Preschool Education, the EPI study, identified strong leadership to be one of the key characteristics of effective early childhood settings, with trained curriculum leader teachers having the greatest impact on setting quality and children's educational outcomes. The educational leader of a service has the potential to build the knowledge, skills and professionalism of educators, but also to inspire and motivate, to affirm and extend their practice and pedagogy. The introduction of the National Quality Framework, the NQF, for education and care services um, in 2012, also set new expectations for educational leadership in Australia. While there's been positional leadership roles in services, for example, directors and coordinators, for the first time, approved providers were mandated to designate an educational leader to lead the development and the implementation of the educational programs at the service. The role of the educational leader is primarily to collaborate with educators and provide curriculum direction and guidance to lead the development and implementation of an effective educational program in the service, to ensure that children's learning and development are guided by the learning outcomes of the approved learning frameworks, to support educators to effectively implement the planning cycle to enhance programs and practices. The educational leader plays a pivotal role in supporting educators to implement an ongoing cycle of assessment and planning. The planning cycle is integral to a planned and reflective approach to program planning and implementation. A sequence assessment and rating data suggests that services and educators find the planning cycle to be challenging, with this being one of the quality practice elements being in the top five elements that are consistently not met. Professional development, support for colleagues, learning and the creation of learning communities are also integral to the educational leadership role. The Educator's Guide to the Early Years Learning Framework unpacks the steps of the planning cycle and this useful resource is freely available on the ASEQA website. Leadership in education and care is complex, it's multifaceted and it's diverse. And the research suggests that this type of pedagogical leadership may present challenges and require a different set of skills from other types of leader in the service. In nominating and developing the educational leader, I think the necessary skills and knowledge and attributes would include communication and in interpersonal skills, comprehensive knowledge of theory that relates to early childhood education and care, for example, child development, attachment, learning, knowledge of professional standards and the approved learning frameworks, a contemporary understanding of evidence-based best practice approaches to teaching and learning, knowledge of leadership theory and the uses of a range of leadership styles, thinking skills, including the ability to critically analyse and challenge conventional practice and ideas, a sense of purpose and direction and the ability to influence, a willingness to mentor and support educators from diverse backgrounds and with varying levels of knowledge and experience, and importantly, an openness and commitment to learning and participating in professional learning opportunities. As previously mentioned, the 2018 NQS expects that the educational leader is supported in their role. Resources to empower leaders, enable capacity building and ensure the, the role is well resourced include things like professional learning materials and opportunities, promoting the role and its importance to service staff members, to other agencies in the local service network and to families. Time to effectively implement the role, networking and collegial support opportunities. Approved providers and service managers and directors might also consider what the outcomes of the role might look like in terms of improved quality programs and practice. 
I'm really excited about the role of the educational leader. I think they have such potential to drive quality improvement and quality outcomes. What a significant achievement to be asked to take on that role within your service. I've got such respect for educational leaders and the important work that they do.